Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Monday morning and I am letting the kids sleep in today because before we start school, I have got to sort and organize our homeschool curriculum. We recently received some new materials and our second and fourth grade year is officially complete. It was my intention to get to this mess over the weekend, but I didn't. I did, however, spend a good part of the weekend meal prepping, which will save me a ton of time in the kitchen this week. Today, I'll be sharing two of our favorite Asian-inspired dishes, one of which is a crock pot meal. So let's get started. This recipe is for Korean barbecue short ribs. Start by seasoning about three pounds of short ribs. I prefer boneless, but I'm just working with what I can get. Season them on all sides with a little salt and pepper, and then dredge them in flour. Once they're all good and coated, you're going to place them on a hot griddle or pan with some cooking oil. Make sure your pan is good and hot so it gives them a nice sear. Once they've got some good color, it's time to transfer the ribs to the crock pot. Or you could do this step the night before, storing them in the fridge overnight in an airtight container, saving you time and dishes the next day. However these ribs make it to the crock pot, they're going to cook on low for six to seven hours, closer to seven hours if they're coming from the fridge. These ribs cook in the most amazing sauce, which can be made days ahead. Exact measurements are in the description box below. Just mix brown sugar, soy sauce, sesame oil, and crushed red pepper if you like a little heat. When the ribs are done, remove them from the crock pot and mix up a cornstarch slurry of two tablespoons cornstarch to two tablespoons water. Stir the slurry into that sauce before returning the ribs to the crock pot. Then return the ribs and set your crock pot to warm while you pull together the rest of this meal. I love to serve this with steamed broccoli, either fresh or frozen, and plain white rice. Oftentimes, I'll make the rice a few days ahead or in the morning when I turn on the crock pot. Sometimes I take it a step further and throw together a quick vegetable fried rice with a bag of frozen peas and corn. Just add some of those frozen veggies to a hot pan or griddle. While those are thawing out in the pan, whisk up a few eggs, then scramble the eggs. If you don't have enough room in your pan for the eggs with the vegetables, remove the veggies. You want plenty of room to cook your eggs or else they're just going to coat everything and you won't have pieces of fried egg in your rice. Once the eggs are cooked, you can add your rice. I like to top it with soy sauce, a little sesame oil, whatever you have. I found this sriracha seasoning that we like, but salt, pepper, garlic, onion powder are all great in this. Add a little crushed red pepper if you like spice. There you go, steamed broccoli and vegetable fried rice to go along with those short ribs. Now let's move on to what my kids call fancy ramen. I'm going to show you how to prep this for a really fast weeknight meal. We're going to start off with that sauce from the short ribs, so if you made that, you have everything you need. Heat the sauce on the stove until it comes to a boil, then add in that cornstarch slurry. Give it a stir and let it simmer for a bit before turning off the heat. Here I have some boneless, skinless chicken breasts and thighs I cut into bite-sized pieces. You can use just breast or just thighs. I prefer thighs, but this was all I could get from the butcher this week. Season it well with salt, pepper, garlic. Then saute it in a hot pan with some oil till it's cooked through. Transfer to a baking dish to cool. Once it's cooled, top it with the sauce and give it a good stir to coat the chicken. I like to freeze these in sandwich size zipper bags. One full bag of chicken is enough for our family of five to top our ramen. Laying these flat to freeze will not only save space in the freezer, but will help it to thaw quicker when it comes time to use it. Pulling this all together takes no time at all, especially if you use some Asian style pre-cut veggies. Start by sauteing the vegetables. While those cook down, I like to prepare the broth for the ramen. You'll need a can of reduced fat coconut milk, a few teaspoons of red curry paste, and some of those packets from the ramen. I prefer the chicken flavor. Give this a stir and bring it to a boil. Once I have the broth going, I grab the chicken from the freezer. 
If you're heating this in a smaller pan, you may need to remove the veggies. I was able to scoop mine to the back of my griddle. I've just turned off the heat back there. This chicken takes no time to heat up, about 15 minutes or so. Once the broth has come to a boil and your chicken and veggies are ready, it's time to assemble the ramen bowls. I like to layer the noodles with the veggies and chicken, then I ladle the hot broth over everything. Give the noodles a few minutes to cook right there in the bowl, about seven to 10 minutes. All right, that's all I've got for you guys this week. Please be sure to share and subscribe if you enjoy this content. I'll be posting a new video next week.